Alright, so this is Bonsai Escape 2. Let's go ahead and start, um, I guess to explain what this Start++ plus plus 3x is, is this game has a New Game Plus feature. And so, as I've beat, once you beat the game once, this is a 2x. I beat the game a second time, so now it's 3x. I imagine it'll just keep going up, which, um, what it means is that enemies increase in health and damage, so basically the game gets harder every time. Um, and that is a bit of a problem for me uh, that I see because I've already gotten to... Like, the weapons themselves don't have an infinite growth like this apparently does. So I imagine this game would get eventually so tough that... I don't know. It seems interesting, at least, that uh, the game could have a potentially limitless difficulty increase. Now, different about this game from the first one is that you do get to choose who you play as. And what's neat is that whoever you don't choose will still be with you to uh, assist you. So let's go ahead and pick Rokihi from the uh, main character of the first game. Then she is uh, our captain. Let's go ahead and start. Now, the first game was an on-rails cover-based shooter. Although this game is not that. It is a third-person shooter. Now this this is just going to be a sort of short recap of the first ending of the first game, but we can skip this opening cutscene, which I'm going to go ahead and do for review purposes. Don't want to make the video too long. And skip this one. Now maybe you can hear that, I don't know. But my computer runs with a high fan when this game runs. Which doesn't happen very often. Oh yeah, let me change my weapons here. So you do have an inventory. And you can share weapons between each other. You get two weapons. You switch between them by pressing 1 and 2 on the keyboard. And of course you can press R. After you fire you press R to reload move with WASD and that's about it. Eyes for your inventory and escape will bring up the game menu itself. You can change options you can look at the controls, you got um, these different kinds of options. I did reduce the mouse sensitivity I believe from what it was before and then oh yeah <laughs> You do have a few other options here. So you can obviously fire by pressing left click. You can zoom by clicking right click. This is a toggle on and off so you can still move around and then zoom in or not. And you can run by, you just press shift. You don't have to hold shift. You just press it and you start running. However, you can, uh, if you stop moving and move again, then you'll stop running. And then if you try to zoom in, you'll also stop running. You cannot stop the running. If you press shift again, it just stays with running. And then E will, of course, um, investigate, interact with stuff. Typical uh, sh PC shooter controls. And then F is a melee attack, which I pretty much never have used. I can't really tell how effective it is either because enemies don't really have health bars they just kind of die after you shoot them a bunch oh yeah so you learned from the first game that uh, that there are those panels that are different colors they can they can be shot so let's go ahead interact by um, turning on the water here. You'll notice these white lines that go up and down on objects that you can interact with, at least uh, important ones. Like uh, maybe you can use E to look at other things, but the shining light, the shining white line that goes up and down like that, that is, those are important things to interact with. 
and even after and never mind and then this this is a secret there are these little mini frogs throughout the game there are 25 of them and if you shoot them all each one you shoot you know you'll, you can see the game is saved at the top right you shoot 25 of them they're all hidden in specific locations throughout the game and you get to unlock a blueprint for a weapon which means when you get when you unlock a blueprint it simply means that you can buy it in the shop and since I've already unlocked all the blueprints because uh, New Game Plus you can see you can pick up some weapons here this is just a little tutorial on inventory management so you can see I've got weapons now so if I wanted to I can I guess reduce the firepower of my partner character here if this will work maybe you can't equip the same weapon twice that probably makes sense and then here's another one so basically since I've already unlocked all the blueprint weapons um, those frogs mean nothing now there's no point in refinding them even though you can uh, a lot of stuff carries over for New Game Plus, which is nice because it means that um, you don't have to get everything necessarily in one run. Now, what am I doing missing with this water here? I turn the valves. The fire's still going. Oh yeah, so I guess there's also these puzzle elements in the game because the first game was just a straight on rails, shooting, hiding behind cover, and now this game is not that, it is a third person shooter. In fact, you can't even crouch. There is no crouch button, so the only way to take cover is to literally stand behind something. You can't like crouch behind something, pop out and shoot. So the action is definitely different in this game because here you're just kind of shooting at stuff. I mean, it's definitely not bad, it's just different which is just a strange turn from the first game but it is uh, interesting because you can come around you can pick up um, weapons you can take your enemy weapons that's probably like the cheapest way for sure to get weapons oh also I didn't even point it out that those blue orbs I pick up uh, we'll get to some more enemies here All right, as the game controls mentioned earlier you can also press in the mouse wheel to throw a grenade in fact, we're going to need to do that here. Let's grab some grenades. Solution for this little puzzle here is that there's a box blocking the door, so you got to remove it if you can. Just like that. You're going to come through here. Just give me some more enemies to take out. you gotta reload so yeah your partner does help out and attack oh that guy's coming upstairs so yeah these blue orbs here these are nanosis and they are tracked in the top left corner of my screen here those blue numbers up there those are very important those are probably the most valuable currency you get besides the actual currency well actually I think they're even more valuable than the actual currency and I'll explain why in a moment as soon as we unlock the shop here. So what you do is you just save this girl here. And she, oh man, she has some uh, cringy weeaboo dialogue. Oh, you'll see what I mean in a second here. Also, Rokihi, she has probably the worst voice acting in this game. Benchy, he sounds totally fine. Uh, nothing gets... Now you remind me of Mr. Betas, who keeps saying the same thing to me last time. Also, Mr. Betas, who was a primary, primary character in the first game, he's not even in this game. He gets mentioned a few, a few times, but uh, he's nowhere to be found in this game. You really need to be taught some manners. Calm down, Rakihi. Also, Benchy, while his acting is probably the best in this game, his 
recording quality is not great. There's a lot of pops, a lot of pee pops, if I can pop, 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 like that. You hear a lot of that in his recordings. She probably misunderstood something about us. But sir, her foul mouth is too much. That's cute about her, right? She's just a kid. Give her a rest, will yeah, you? Here she, here she comes. I'm not a kid, Konobakoni-chan, and I'm super strong. There you go. That's really all you need to know about her. She's going to talk more like that. Uh... Why did you call my captain? Oh, man. Rikihi. So, thankfully, we can just mash spacebar to pass through dialogue. So what we're going to do here... In Chester, she, you see her a bunch throughout the game, because she is a shop owner, so you gotta interact with her a lot. But she doesn't have to have a whole lot of dialogue as, um, when you just go to the shop. So let's go ahead and do this quick little task here of restoring power. There is... So yeah, there is a surprising amount of, um, I guess, puzzle solving, if you want to call it that, in this game. Uh, let me think. Those fuses. One is in here. You gotta go through a little dialogue thing. To pick up key items. There's another one. And then the last one is back upstairs. So yeah, this game, um, this is just the first area. There are uh, several areas in this game. In fact, when you get into, there's even a town you get into eventually. And you go upstairs. That is pretty big. It's a pretty open area. There's not necessarily a whole lot to do. There are side missions you can take. So, like, there'll be a couple of people out there with some optional side quests that they request, which you can take on to basically just get money, which is good for buying new weapons, upgrading your weapons, which I will show once we unlock the shop here. But yeah, you can check out the trailer on the Steam page to see that there are other areas and and it, what they look like. Just trying to say that there are bigger areas in here. This is probably the smallest area in the game. This one area here, the first area, which you know makes sense. The game only gets bigger as you go through it. Whoops. Out my way, Benchy. So I'll turn on the generators, power is back on, which means that we can now use the elevator to get to a new floor. And that computer. And we can use the shop. Now, let me explain the shop. That box is going crazy. Oh my gosh. So yeah, story stuff. Now, shopping. Now, to explain the shop, when you get a blueprint, you can then buy a weapon. So all these weapons are unlocked by getting blueprints. This one in particular is the one you get for getting all those little mini frogs. And then these ones are heavy weapons. They are the hardest to find slash unlock, I guess. Here is you can just straight up buy ammo for your weapons. And then here you can exchange. You can either get rid of your nano sis for money. Or you can use money to get more nano sis. And yes, it is totally typical to simply exchange a ton of money for nano sis because the weapons you get, those are going to be where you get most of your money. Now Obviously, this is the beginning of the game, so the mo these weapons aren't worth all that much, but select one of the stronger weapons you get, and you see the money goes up by the thousands rather than 20 or 50. So, 
you get later into the game and that's where you, how you make most of your money and then you come in and use a nano sys sell or buy nano sys with money because those are needed to use upgrades so if you see here each upgrade requires both money and nano sys and the money is a lot easier to come by so you have to exchange for nano sys really to upgrade other things now I don't know if the last two weapons are just not upgradable or if I have to do something else to allow myself to upgrade them but man this game would take a ton of grinding if you really wanted to upgrade everything for example this weapon here 4,000 money and 300 nanosis it takes 550 money to get one nanosis so to upgrade this would take a ton I barely just got 300 nanosis those things are expensive so to upgrade this takes a lot and then it's going to take for the next upgrade I'm going to need another 350 nanosis there's no way I'm going to get all of those anytime soon it literally takes a ton of grinding a ton of playthroughs if you really really want to upgrade everything I've upgraded like looks like less than half and I've beaten the game twice already so that's just upgrading the weapons firepower there's also upgrading ammunition capacity which thankfully is oh never mind it's not the ammunition capacity it's the oh no wait this is ammo capacity yes ammo capacity I believe I believe these were all pretty cheap I want to say they're only money but I can't really tell now because uh, they're already upgraded and then this is actual like piercing power which I'm not sure what that means in terms of a uh, combat but it's another upgrade that makes your attack stronger and then down here these are totally worth getting uh, totally worth saving up for this this is health increase and then this is a capacity inventory capacity increase this is totally worth getting so that way you can carry up to 30 things in your inventory rather than just the 15 you can carry it to start with so you can only have like half of the screen filled up to start but you upgrade it and you can carry like the whole screen pretty much which means you can carry more things to then because you're gonna get the bulk of your money by picking up weapons from enemies and then selling them so having a higher inventory capacity is important for that and then as we go through the game let's go ahead and take that elevator up yeah ground floor is not the same as first floor here interestingly second floor is the new floor we can go to now oh my gosh camera just starts looking at them with their mouths open like that silly so here you go through the level and you're gonna run into more enemies me switch to weapon with more ammo you should go through here so yeah you know what it's kinda unfair for me to be using this endgame weapon let me pick this up you can't pick up weapons when you're reloading just for reference that's why I had a problem there so yeah let's go ahead and use a basic weapon here so yeah obviously later on you get more powerful weapons oh and you can upgrade them bench use hats in my way oh man so yeah the gameplay then is just about dodging and shooting rather than taking cover as the first game was oh man that guy can run fast also seems a little unfair maybe he wasn't aiming you don't have to aim to fire so I was just thinking about how quickly he moved I think I can run and shoot yeah I can although most of the time I just kind of I don't know from playing the first game I guess I'm used to sort of moving slowly and aiming carefully but this game you don't necessarily have to do that nor is it necessarily the best strategy I don't know maybe it's better to uh, be more um, mobile move around more since you can't really take cover too easily I haven't really tried that much because um, in this game 
the way that health works is those nanocysts that I said were so valuable are actually full recoveries. I just totally passed that mini frog. What? There we go. And what I mean is that the nanocysts are full recoveries. So if you're going to take a lot of damage, I gotta throw another grenade through there. No. There we go. I think that's the, those, those are the only two times the grenade trick is actually used. So yeah, I guess there's probably maybe different situations where running and shooting is better than, or compared to um, standing still and aiming carefully. There's probably different situations where one's better than the other. I mean, if you're surrounded by enemies, it's probably better to keep moving. Obviously. But let me explain the nanosys. As full health recoveries, if I don't shoot here, if I just let them shoot me, I'll get a prompting that says Q for instant heal. That uses a nanosys and it recovers my health completely. And the same thing goes for my partner. If my partner gets low on health, I'll need to run over and heal them if they can hurt my partner. Yeah, yeah, I'll need to run over and heal him and use that because if I don't heal him, then he'll die and if he dies, I lose. If you or your partner dies, you get a game over. So, that also means it's important to stay with your partner. I can't do anything. Because if you get separated in a firefight, then they could get damaged and they could die, which means you'll lose. So you want to stay with your partner, which isn't really too bad. It's not that hard of a thing to stay together. Because uh, basically, if you're running away from a firefight, that's when you need to be careful that you don't leave your partner behind. Because most of the time, they'll stick with you. Bam. Obviously in a corridor I probably want it's probably best to just stay slow and shoot because you don't have a lot of room to uh run around to avoid shots. But if you're in a more open area, maybe it's better to uh run around more. I haven't really uh, tried that a whole lot. Mostly because I'm too used to playing like the first game where you take careful aim. Anyway, Another comparison to make is that the first game I spent no more than four hours on to get all the achievements. This game, it doesn't have achievements, which is weird because the first game had achievements, but also this second game, it's easily twice as long as the first game, probably more like four times as long. I've spent, I spent 12 hours on my first playthrough. I didn't have to. I was looking for frogs to unlock the blueprint and I was grinding to get more loot to you know try to upgrade my stuff so it really doesn't take 12 hours to beat this game through it probably is more like eight but I just want to point out how much time I guess there's more time to spend in this game because you're not just going through linear levels you're you know exploring levels trying to find things so there's a lot more involvement in what you do. Also, just the freedom of movement is like a welcome addition because it's, it's weird because playing the game, I think it's more fun to have like full movement to be able to move around an environment. But I can't deny that the first game was more polished in the experience, at least, because um, the cover shooting was more interesting as uh, combat. Combat in this game is a little dumber because you can just sit there and shoot and reload and then hit Q to re recover your health if you're getting shot. Um, basically you, you don't have to take cover. Obviously there are still benefits to taking cover because you don't have to use your nanosys which is your most valuable thing that's 550 gold per pop every time you use one of those you know for comparison. Ugh. 
Also, you can play a spacebar to dodge roll. I haven't really found a use for this because it's it's kind of slow, you know. I don't know how good it actually is at dodging gunfire. But it is helpful for getting over little obstacles on the ground. Now I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit. I'm going to use my end game weapon on this boss here just to speed it up because I don't want to take time using it using a, an actual weapon that you would have at this point in the game which would require you to be more careful in your play you know you gotta hide behind stuff and shoot I don't like the sound of this. Mm, sir? again Rikihi with her voice acting Benshi is totally fine now if you remember from the first game white means it doesn't hurt yet and once it goes blue then you can hurt it. Whoops. And of course if you wait a little bit, there any damage taken will of course be healed. As you can tell by the, the blood splatter on the screen. That just means you've taken damage. And of course you also want to be sure to go around and pick up all the money. Nanosis. Which... Uh, I don't know, it adds a little bit of uh, tedium to the game, just um, have to go around and pick things up. Also, you can just run over money and nano to pick it up, and ammunition, but weapons themselves you have to manually look at and press E to pick up. Now I want to get past that part just so I can show you the next area, to show you that there is more variety to the locations. Again, look at the trailer on the Steam page, you can see there are more locations. But this is outdoors, and there's going to be a little cutscene here, which you cannot skip these cutscenes. As you see, there's no skip option here. You just have to mash the space bar to go through dialogue. That's what I hate right now. We need to try and avoid a direct confrontation with that tank. Ah, oh, bloody hell. But we don't have much choice. Like it or not, we need to go there and look for clues. So you can tell right again the difference in voice acting between Benshi and Rukihi. Roger that. But that's just what you gotta go through the game. So, uh, the environments, of course, you know, it's, um, its quality is um, apparent. You know, you can see what, how much uh, grass there is around here. I mean, it looks, I think it looks fine. I, th I actually like it. I mean, obviously it's not the, it's not the same as, you know, what you get with AAA games today, but I think it looks fine. It looks nice, at least. I don't care about the uh, low number of objects on screen. It's totally fine with me. I don't have a problem with the, uh, the style of the game. But yeah, there are great bigger areas here as you can see. You go through these areas. Oops. They got a better weapon than I do. Oh, I gotta heal my partner so he doesn't die. Oh yeah. That reminds me, there is some language in this game, as you may have just heard from Benshi. You can run in here. Whoa, that is a tank. So there are a couple tanks in this game, and you don't want to mess with them. There will be a later part in the game where you can take care of them, but at this early point in the game, you just have to avoid them. The tanks you cannot hurt at the beginning of the game here. Whoops. Again, you gotta heal your partner, make sure they don't die. And there's a whole thing here where you gotta find a way into one of these buildings. And then you like restore power again, get things going. There's some uh, investigation, like adventure game type uh, puzzles to solve where you just gotta find the right thing, put it over here. And at the same time, there's combat going on. A thing to note is that outside of the first area, enemies respawn indefinitely. 
So you can grind forever in any area you want outside of the beginning area because there's these areas here where enemies will just come through forever. So there is an infinite uh, supply of enemies to take out and to collect um, stuff from. Also, as one last critique of the game, the final boss is nothing like this. The final boss is not an on-ground shoot at stuff. So all the upgrades that you can get don't apply to the final boss because you're in a different setting. You're doing something different, completely different. And the final boss itself is also kind of tedious. So look forward to that. But uh, the rest of the game is totally fun. I liked it. Uh, obviously, there are some a few performance issues as it goes with uh, the first game also had, you know, grammar problems and a couple of performance issues like it'll just it'll just hang for a couple of seconds when it's loading something. But uh, I enjoy having the exploration to do and the and everything else that I've already mentioned. But that is pretty much the game. Uh, if you have any other questions about it, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any other recommendations of games like this, please let me know about those as well. I'd be interested in playing more games like this. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.